Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm Zeke, and welcome to the Dream Green Show. This episode is brought to you by Weeble. Sign up now and deposit $100 to receive two free stocks valued up to $1,400. In this video, we're gonna find out which oil and gas company is the best because a lot of people bought into these oil and gas companies when the barrel of oil went into negative prices. So we're gonna find out which one is the best. I've been hearing talks about BP, Exxon Mobil, Chevron. Well, we're gonna put them all together today. So make sure that you stick to the end of the video to find out which one is the best growth stock and also the best dividend stock. But before we dive into the video, make sure that you guys hit that thumbs up button, just a button that kind of looks like this. All you gotta do is just, just click it one time. It helps out this channel more than you can even imagine, guys, just by taking one second out of your day and hitting the thumbs up button. But enough talking, let's dive straight into the video. All right, YouTube, and we're back. The three oil and gas companies that we're going to look at is Exxon Mobil, tickle symbol XOM, BP, tickle symbol BP, and then Chevron, ticker symbol CVX. Now I do own a little bit of Exxon Mobil inside of my portfolio right now. So today is a good day because we're gonna find out at the exact same time on whether if this is the best stock that I should be investing into right now for my dividend portfolio. All right, so Exxon Mobil is at $44.51 right now. So they've been growing their dividends right now for the last 38 years They have increased their dividend payment. So that means they are dividend aristocrats. They're almost dividend kings. In order to become a dividend king, you have to increase your dividends over the last 50 years. And I think that's what ExxonMobil is trying to do at the moment. Right now, they're dividend aristocrats and they're trying to get to a dividend kings. That's what makes them such a good company right now. Not only that they have been growing their dividends for the last 38 years, but their dividend yield is at a whopping 8.01%. That is a very high yield for a stock. That's even higher than AT&T. You guys know how much I love AT&T. So this is Exxon Mobil. They pay out quarterly, so four times a year, every three months, and they pay out 87 cents per share. So every share that you own of Exxon Mobil, you will be receiving 87 cents over the course of a year through four payments. The next one that we're gonna be looking at is BP. This one is at $23.50 at the recording of this video, and they have increased their dividends over the last seven years. So not quite as much as ExxonMobil, but seven years is not bad either. And they have a even higher dividend yield of 9.53%. That is insane, guys. They also pay out quarterly. That means every three months you will receive a dividend from BP. And for every share of BP that you own, you will be receiving 31 cents. So divide that up by four. That's how much you will be receiving in dividends every quarter. And the last one that we're gonna look at is Chevron. Now Chevron has the lowest dividend yield. Their price is at $89.73. So they are the highest price with the lowest dividend yield, but 5.94% is not bad at all. But they only have the dividend growth of the last four years. Either that's a sign that they have a lot of room for growth, or they probably cut their dividends in the past. They had to have cut their dividends in the past in order to have four, only four years worth of growth. So they have a dividend yield of 5.94%, and they also pay quarterly. All of these oil and gas companies that I just listed pay quarterly. And for every share of Chevron that you own, you will receive $1.29 worth of dividend every single share that you own. So you divide that up by four and you'll receive that every quarter from Chevron. So let's just dive in just a little deeper right quick. So Exxon Mobil, they're expecting their earnings for 2020 to be in the negative, negative 10 cents. And then for 2021, 155. And then for 2022, uh, 340. So they're expecting to recover after this 2020 pandemic from going from the negatives to the positives. So by 2022, they're expecting to be at 340. So they do expect this company to grow from the negatives to 340 over the course of two years. And also, if we're looking at ExxonMobil compared to the S&P 500 over the last three, six, and nine months, and also the entire year, 
they are down from the S&P 500, 38%. So they're not the best growth dividend stock. There are some out there that are actually beating the S&P 500. But if you do want to get into the oil and gas, all of them are pretty much losing to the S&P 500 at the moment. But this is just a comparison to the other two. So let's take a look at BP. If we're taking a look at BP from 2020, they're also on the negatives. 2021, 173, and 2022, 292. So it's a little less than Exxon Mobil for 2022, but that is that is what they're expecting to do by the year 2022. And if we look also at BP compared to the S&P 500, they're down for the three, six, and nine month, and also on the year down 38% as well so exxon mobile was down 38.38 percent and bp was down 38.8 percent so they're a little bit lower than um exxon mobile and the last one we're gonna look at is chevron now if we take a look at chevron 2020 they're looking to break even somehow 2021 275 and 2022 523 so they have the highest expectations out of all three of the companies if we're looking at them compared to the s p 500 they're down the three six and nine month and also on the year but only down 27 percent on the year now before we get into back testing them to see which one would be the best buy at the moment let's look at bp scroll down to that dividend growth history back in 2009 they had an annual dividend of three dollars and 35 cents and then they cut them in 2010 and they still are working their way all the way back up but they still haven't made their way all the way back up from 2009 to 2019 so they have a ways to go they haven't increased their dividends much at all over the last couple of years so they have a ways to go in order to get back to the 2009 state but now that we looked at all these numbers let's go and back test them now so we can see which one would be the best bang for my buck to add to my dividend portfolio all right so here we are on the analyzer we're going to be testing all the way from 2010 to 2020 that means if we invested ten thousand dollars into these three companies back in 2010 for the last 10 years what would they be if we invested in 2010 where would we be right now in 2020 the cash the cash flow we're going to put at none no rebalancing display income yes reinvest dividends yes and then our we're going to put first is xm mobile which is xom xm mobile then we have b p and then we have c v x Okay, we're gonna put 100% for portfolio number one, portfolio number two, which is BP, and 100% for portfolio number three, which is CVX. Let's go ahead and rename these portfolios. Exxon Mobil, portfolio number one. Portfolio number two would be BP, and portfolio number three would be CVX. All right, so when I hit analyze, it's gonna uh, show us the data. If we were to invest it in 2010 into these three companies, with reinvesting our dividends, where will we be in 2020? So we hit analyze portfolios. Let's see. Wow. So it's a it's a very, very, very clear night and day difference. Okay, first of all, we started off with ten thousand dollars with ExxonMobil. Even with reinvesting our dividends, we ended up losing money. Uh we'll have a final balance with today in today's money with eight thousand eight hundred and thirty three dollars so we lost almost two thousand dollars all right bp we're down to six thousand dollars so we lost even more money four thousand dollars but with cvx the clear winner the one with the lowest dividend yield which is insane the one with the lowest dividend yield everyone want to add these high dividend um yield stocks to their portfolio so it can look good on youtube but cvx with the lowest dividend yield out of all three of these oil and gas companies made money all right it's the only one that made money and they got sixteen thousand two hundred and thirty four dollars so let's scroll down just a little bit so of course yes it did take a hit right here because of the pandemic but still at the top right here um bp would be at ten thousand nine hundred and $59 and Exxon Mobil will be at $14,000. So yes, of course, before the pandemic came, you would have been in, in the positive. But even with the pandemic hit, 
Um, before the pandemic, your CVX would have been at $22,000. And even after they hit, you are still above in the positive. So that's something to look at right there. So don't just look at the dividend yield. Now we look at the portfolio income for 2019. Exxon Mobil, you would have brought in $676 worth of dividends. BP, which have the highest dividend yield, you would have brought in $687 worth of dividends. And CVX, with the lowest dividend yield, you would have brought in even more than Exxon Mobil and BP with a with $875. And that's because you made the most money from cvx over the time so don't only look at dividend yields when you guys are trying to invest now i know what you're saying what if you uh invested every single month into the stock market how would that turn out buying the dip buying the dip well let's see how that plays out right quick so let's scroll back up let's say we only had one thousand dollars back to start off with in 2010 like most of us we only had around a thousand dollars in 2010 that's all we had so we come down to cash flow and contribute a fixed amount I invest $800 every single month, so we're gonna change that to monthly $200 a week, which is $800 a month. No rebalancing, display income, benchmark. So let's go ahead and test that. Remember, this is if we started with $1,000 in 2010, and we invest $200 every single week or $800 a month into these companies. So this is us buying every single dip possible. Let's see what will happen. All right, so if we reinvested $800 into these three companies over the last 10 years, starting off with $1,000, Exxon Mobil, you will have $74,786. BP, you will have $87,118. And CVX, once again, is the winner with $113,000. The best year CVX has was the up 36%. The best year BP had was up 29% and the best year exxon mobile ever had was up 20 percent the worst year was minus 37 minus 39 and minus 28 and just looking at the chart right here once again before the pandemic you guys would have made even more money so that is the chart let's go ahead and scroll up a little bit to see if we can add a benchmark to it so let's add the vanguard benchmark this is pretty much uh the standard let's scroll down yeah so all three of these oil and gas companies is below the Vanguard 500 index. So you did not outperform the index, but you would still have made money in not being in the negatives by reinvesting into these companies and collecting some sweet dividends along the way. All right, YouTube, and we're back. And with that being said, I do own one share of Exxon Mobil in my account. I am down 32%, down $21. I bought it at $65 and it's currently at $44.45. But you guys do know what I'm gonna end up doing with this share. I'm probably gonna sell it when the market open and buy Chevron because it's been shown by data that Chevron is a much better company than Exxon Mobil, NBP, and I would have made a lot more money in dividends, even though their dividend yield is lower. If we scroll down, let's look at the dividend payments I've been receiving from Exxon Mobil. So right here, I got one dividend payment of 87 cents from Exxon Mobil on March 10th, 2020, and I received another one of 87 cents on June 10, 2020. So I'm gonna end up selling these, and then I'm gonna end up selling Exxon Mobil, the one share that I have, and just buy Chevron with it. Now, don't just base all of your buying potentials off of the past, okay? That just showed you how dependable a company is that they're able to grow their dividends for the last 10, 12, 48 years, okay, guys? But you also want to look at their future, what do they have planned coming up, any new technologies they have coming out, any president changes that they have to their company. You want to look at all that. But just by back testing, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Exxon Mobil and add Chevron to my portfolio. So yeah, guys, that's it. If you guys like that video, make sure that you leave that thumbs up. All you gotta do is click it one time. It really helps me out a lot. I appreciate you guys for watching this. If you guys want me to compare any more stocks, just make sure that you leave them down in the comment section. And while you're down in the comment section, let me know what you want me to compare. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel that you don't miss out on any future videos. But other than that, I'm Zeke, bringing you the Dream Green Show, and I'm out. Peace. So it's probably a subscribe button right here. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button. It's right there. Hit it. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, I'm gone.